Behold, the Skoda Kodiak VRS, the slightly more woo, mental version of Skoda's practical, sensible family seven-seater SUV. Now, it could be the ideal car for you if you have a big family, but you still want something that's a little bit fun, a little bit cool looking. And to find out if it is, well, I'm going to be seeing what it's like to drive, explaining what the upgrades are over the normal Kodiak, and of course, finding out what's good and what's not so good about it. Let's start off this review by talking about the styling because there's a lot of upgrades over the normal Kodiak, such as this gloss black grille. There's also the VRS badging there. You've got some deeper front bumpers and a front splitter, though look at this. These air ducts, they are fake as revealed by the car wear of Stick of Truth. Still, you do get full LED headlamps and they're adaptive as well, so they'll blank out their beams so they don't dazzle oncoming drivers. Now, a big upgrade is this though, look. 20 inch alloy wheels plus red brake calipers. There's some side skirts as well. You get contrasting black wing mirrors and roof bars. Looks quite nice, I'm liking it so far. Then as we move around the back, you've got LED lights here as well. You have a redesigned bumper to make it look more sporty, but check this out, right? check this out. So you have this chrome surround and in there, deep within there, there are the real exhaust pipes. So it's kind of fake, not too bad, not the usual terrible fakery that you get with something like an Audi. And of course there's two of them. This is fake though, look. A rear diffuser, which doesn't diffuse anything at all. <laughs> what do you think about the styling upgrades on this car? Do they make a big difference? Click on the pop-out banner just up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen to cast your vote. There are some noticeable changes to the interior of the Kodiak VRS as well. For instance, you get a sporty steering wheel with red stitching and a VRS badge. In fact, there's red stitching everywhere, down here on the gear selector, here on the doors, and of course, on the seats. Speaking of the seats, blooming lovely seats these are. They're comfy and they're supportive. The only thing I don't like about them is this fake carbon fiber effect here. There's also some more fake carbon fiber effects here on the dash and here on the doors, but I do like this, the Alcantara lining of the door trims. That is very, very nice. I also like the aluminum pedals and the bespoke VRS dials, and you can change the view as well. I quite like the one that just has a big central rev counter. Actually, I've just noticed this. There's some more fake carbon fiber effects even on the dials. What's all that about? And of course, there's plenty of room here in the middle row and you get slidey, recliney seats. As for the third row, well, it's easy enough to get in, but it's, it's only just about bearable for an adult. Just, just. Now I do like this though, look. Every single seat has like the sporty effect, even all the way back here, which is a nice touch, isn't it? Now, while this car may be the sporty VRS model, it still has the usual Skoda Kodiak goodness, such as pop-out door protectors and an umbrella in the door. As the one in the other door as well. There's also a little rubbish bin that you can put in the door pocket, like that. There's an ice scraper in the fuel filler cap, and it doubles as a magnifying glass. I have my eye on you. You have a handy drawer underneath the front passenger seat, and the cup holders have little grippers on them so that you can actually open a bottle one-handed while you're driving. Mmm, tasty water. Then there's the boot light, which doubles as a removable torch. And that brings me on to the practicality of this car because it's really, really good. For instance, look, the low cover fits neatly underneath this false floor. And even in seven-seater mode, you can carry a large suitcase in the boot, which you can't in many other seven-seaters. Will it shut though? Will it? Come on. Come on, Scully. You can do it. Shut. 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 Shut it. Shut. <laughs> you can do it. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. Unlike with other Skoda VRS models, this one is available as a diesel only. And it's a bit of a shame because it would be so cool with that two litre turbo you can get in the Ateca Cupra. The stop start button for the keyless go system is here, which is exactly where you'd normally put the key. So <laughs> what is the point? The front sport seats may look cool, but if you're in the back, they are quite wide the way the headrest is fixed. It just means it's hard to see around them. So kids may end up getting travel sick and they'll probably just vomit through here, all over the back of your neck. 
This VRS is fitted with some special sound enhancers. So normally, it just sounds like a normal diesel. Yeah, all a bit clattery. But then when you put it into sports mode, these sound enhancers engage and you get a valve opening in the exhaust and some sounds played to the car's speakers to mimic what appears to be a V8. And then when you rev it, Though. You're still getting the diesel rattle from the front and then this kind of slightly artificial computer gaming noise from the back end and it's just all a bit horribly fake. Skodas are meant to be affordable but not this VRS because it starts from just under £43,000. It's insane. So make sure you go into CarWow and I'm actually putting the details of this car into our configurator. And I've had an offer back from one of our trusted Kawa dealers for £39,000. So saving it just under £4,000. But yeah, it's still rather expensive. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. As standard, you get all wheel drive and a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with paddle shifters. Larger, more powerful brakes. This VRS gets progressive steering, so the more you turn the wheel, the faster the steering gets. And it means that, look, you can go from lock to lock in just two turns, which helps the manoeuvrability. Adjustable suspension, which allows you to choose from three different settings, from comfort for nice and soft, to normal for normalness, or sport, where it's nice and stiff. The two litre diesel engine has two turbos, that means you get 240 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. Yeah, strong. So, seeing as this is supposed to be a sporty VRS, let's see just how quick it is. Put the car into sports gearbox mode, it's in sports mode. Put the stability control into sports mode. Everything's sports mode. Launch it, launch control active. Here we go. Oh my god, it's through first gear like that because it only raced to four and a half. <laughs> and that's the 60. So, an order 60 in 6.7 seconds, which is good for a big seven seater, but it's not mind blowing, is it? Now, I should also point out that this doesn't feel like a particularly quick car when you're just driving around normally. And I mean that in a good way. So, yes, it may be riding on 20 inch alloy wheels, but you don't feel the bumps all that badly at all. In fact, when you've got the adaptive suspension in comfort mode, it's really good over bumps, just like the normal Kodiak, really. However, if you put it into sports mode, then it stiffens up the suspension and you can feel them a bit more anyway. Let's see what the performance is like now for overtaking. So I'm at 60 miles an hour, I'm gonna floor it. It takes probably a second for the gearbox to respond properly, which does slow things down, but once it's off, it's all right. Performance is more kind of determined rather than stellar. It pulls quite well, but it never pushes you into the back of your seat in the same way that a Seat Ateca Cupra does. That's just the effect of having a diesel engine. On the flip side, it will be pretty good if you've got a car full with loads of luggage or you need to tow. But yeah, it's not exactly setting my world alight with the performance. It's just okay. Now I know what you're all thinking, but Matt, this is a diesel. Tell us about the economy, because that's obviously really important. Well, this car is actually one of our long-termers and people at Kawa have been running it. And so far we've been driving it for 72 hours in total, which is quite a lot. And over that period, we have averaged 35.5 miles per gallon, which is only, yet again, okay. I guess what really matters though is how it copes on a twisty road. So actually it does really well. Hardly leans at all, and there's a decent amount of grip though if you go a little bit too crazy. It does start to run out at the front. Obviously being four-wheel drive, it will help you out a little bit when you're trying to fire out of a corner, especially when it's wet, so that's a good thing. But while it is quite surprising what it can do for a big, heavy car, it never feels that much fun. Can you hear the tyres? <laughs> See? And they won't be the only thing that's screeching. It'll be your missus in the passenger seat, probably the kids in the back going, Daddy, slow down, what are you doing? You're trying to kill us. And then your fun will soon come to an end. 
So then what's my final verdict on the Skoda Kodiak VRS? Well, I certainly like the look of it. It's really cool looking for sensible family transport. The problem is that it just doesn't feel sporty enough to drive over the normal Kodiak to warrant the extra cost. Do you know what I'd do? I'd have a normal Kodiak, which is a brilliant car, and then with a the saving, spend it on a second-hand sports car and leave the kids behind. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.